Praise the Lord. Look at you, hallelujah. I said, praise the Lord. Our Jesus is alive. My Jesus is alive. He'll do wonders in your life in Jesus' name. I want you specially recognize our children choir this morning. The song that was rendered, I think it should have come to the whole world that Jesus is coming again and we shall be changed. When he comes, the trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ, they rise. And then you and I and we and all shall be changed in Jesus' name. Maybe I will still have a time to call the children choir back and sing that song again so that everyone all over the globe, a mighty change, a mighty transformation, a mighty glorious change now, and then every one of us will be ready for the coming of the Lord. What are you? Put your hands together for our children. And the youth and the adults, you're doing marvelously well. Please, please permit me just one second more. The brother that played the Hallelujah Chorus, I was watching his hands, and I said, my, my, I think we should take that man, that brother, to the world to see play. Praise the Lord. Now, it's you I'm concentrating on now. I'm going to bring you to the point, by the grace of God, face to face with Christ, your life will never be the same. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time, for this time, for this day. And we're asking, Lord, your blessing will come upon your people, everyone without exception today, in Jesus' name. Prepare us for the coming of the Lord. Everything we need for your show coming, for your certain coming, for your sudden coming, oh Lord, we pray you will do in every life and get us ready for that glorious day in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a good amen. amen. God bless you. We're coming to Ezekiel chapter 34. And we're reading from verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 34. Chapter 34. And we're reading from verse 26. God bless you. You can sit down. It says, And I will make them, and the places round about my hill, a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down. In its season, there shall be showers of blessing. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, it says, And ye my flock, and ye the folds of the shepherd, and ye my flock, the flock of my pasture. Amen. And I am your God, says the Lord God. And now we're going to turn to the New Testament in Luke chapter 12. I will read him from verse 31. Luke chapter 12, verse 31. But rather, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. And now in verse 32, he's talking about the flock again. Ezekiel spoke about the flock. 
And Ezekiel said, showers of blessing are coming upon the flock. And now Christ mentions the flock and he said, fear not little flock. Fear not little flock. In comparison with the population of the world, it's little flock. In comparison with all our community, the church, the disciples, the believers, the Christians, the born again people, are the little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Christ is coming. And he's coming to establish a kingdom. And he wants all his flock the sheep of his pasture and the people who are receiving the showers of blessing he wants everyone to be a partaker of the benefits of his coming on the final day we're looking at the message this morning receiving heaven's showers before christ's second coming we need to be ready we need to be prepared and it is as we are prepared that the Lord comes and then he finds us like the wise virgins. We're ready and we're ready to go with him. The showers are getting us ready. The showers are preparing us for the coming of the Lord. We're going to look at, you know, all those letters again. S, look at this. The S we're looking at, it is the surety of the second coming. The surety and the certainty that the Lord is coming. Is coming, is coming for you, is coming for me, and is coming for the church. And there's a certainty, and there is a surety of the coming of the Lord. In Revelation chapter 1, reading from verse 7. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, it said, Behold, he cometh with the clouds. It said, You can see, get ready, prepare your mind. And behold, it coming, it comes, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. Somebody there shout amen. amen. That word amen there means so it is, and so it will be, and so it is confirmed. There is the shorty. There's a sureness that the Lord is coming. Then he tells us in Revelation chapter 16, and we're reading from verse 15. It says, Behold, I come as a thief. That means I'll come certainly, I'll come suddenly. I'll come when the people in the house, when they are not aware, it will come suddenly. And then he say, Blessed is that is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. It's coming, and it tells us that coming is sure and certain. That coming will be sudden. And then when it comes, only those who are ready, like the wise virgin, they have been saved, they are born again, and their life is pleasing unto the Lord. They keep their garments, the garment of salvation, the robe of righteousness. They keep that, and they do not allow those garments to be soiled by the world. It says then they will not walk naked, and then they will not see a shame. In Revelation chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 7. It says, Behold, I come quickly. Look at how many times now he's telling us about the surety of his coming. The assurance of his coming. And the definite point that he is coming. The prophet's prophesied his false coming. Isa spoke about him is coming. The psalm spoke about him is coming. Micah spoke about him is coming. And while the people, maybe they were just living their lives the way they wanted, he came. And now the same word of God assures us that he is coming the second time. He is coming again. And he says, Behold, I 
this Christ himself talking and he says heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away behold I come quickly blessed is he that keepeth the says of the prophecy of this book look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be then in verse 20 it tells us he which testifieth these things saith surely i come quickly look at that the shorty that is coming the certainty that is coming the imperative that he is coming and one of these days will hear the sound of the trumpet first of all he'll come for the church that's the rapture after that the great tribulation and then after seven years of the great tribulation he will come from the sky and all i shall see him they who have pierced him and they who crucified him and then he sets up the millennial reign and we will reign with him i said we'll reign with him he says even so come lord jesus he is coming and i pray you'll not be missing at the time of his coming in jesus name s in the showers that means the surety that he is coming now h in the holiness before his coming holiness for his second coming holiness in order to be ready and prepared and not be missing out when he comes look at revelation chapter 19 verse 7 holiness for his second coming it says let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready how verse 8 in verse 8 it says and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness, the holiness, the purity of the saints. For you to be ready for his coming. It's not enough to just say, I'm a Christian, I'm born again. Thank God for being born again. But you must have the holiness that he gives us by faith the holiness in the heart in the life in your language in your behavior in everything that you do you're clean through and through you're pure through and through you're righteous through and through your holiness you are holy before god before man and in your own conscience your conscience bears you witness that that is the holiness wrought of God, done of God, and is there for the world to see. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, it tells us, follow peace with all men. You know, if you have a violent spirit, you're not ready for the rapture. You're not ready for his coming. If you have a fighting disposition, the, the people have not even started, you know, waging war against you, and you are, you are kind of uh, fighting ready, and you want to fight everything, everyone, you criticize, you complain, you're just looking for something to fight about, you're not ready for the coming of the Lord. If you're going to be ready for the coming of the Lord, follow peace with all men. Follow peace with your wife. Follow peace with your husband. How long are you going to keep on arguing about non-essentials? Why this one there? Why that one there? And you are angry every time. And you carry anger. You are pregnant with anger all the time. Follow peace with your wife. Follow peace with your husband. 
follow peace with your children and follow peace with your parents follow peace with your neighbors follow peace with all men in your office follow peace in your community follow peace and you know sometimes they'll cheat you sometimes they'll say something about you uh, that is not true and uh, you know they might not be preparing for the rapture you are the one preparing for the rapture you are the one preparing for the coming of the lord for no peace with all men and uh, holiness and holiness holiness of heart holiness by experience holiness in the life you live and holiness without which no man shall see the lord as you look at uh, first thessalonians chapter 5 in first thessalonians chapter 5 reading from verse 22 abstain from all appearance of evil not only evil appearance of evil the people around you they are watching you they see what you do what appears to be evil what other people will interpret to be evil abstain from all appearance of evil and then in verse 23 it tells us in verse 23 and the very god of peace sanctify you holy and i pray god your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless that's holiness holiness the holiness that comes at sanctification you are saved your sins are pardoned, you are forgiven, you are peace with God, and now you go back to God again, and you commit and surrender and consecrate yourself to the Lord. And it sanctifies you, your spirit, your soul. And then it says that you are blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not just that you are holy on Sunday, uh, well, he may not come that day. It may be on Thursday, maybe on Friday. It may be when, you know, some things are happening that you are all ruffled and you are angry and you start the old fight again. And then he comes. And then he says, when he comes, he will reward you according as your work shall be. But he wants you to be preserved in blamelessness in holiness, in righteousness, until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 24, it says, Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. He will do it. He will do it. There are people who believe that God can save. He will do it. There are people who believe that God can heal, but they don't believe in holiness. I'm not talking of people outside there. I mean people here. They don't believe that the same God, by the oppression of heaven, He saves us. He heals us. By that same oppression of the mighty power of God, He sanctifies and it makes us holy. And it purifies us within, through and through. Faithful is seed that calleth you who also will do it. S is the surety of, it, of the second coming. H is the holiness for his second coming. O, the overcomers at his second coming. The overcomers at the second coming. As the Lord is coming, it's not coming for those who are under the feet of Satan being trampled upon. It's not coming for those who are swimming in the ocean of sin and they cannot overcome. It's not coming for those who are overcome by the flesh, the works of the flesh is coming for the overcomers and to overcome you overcome sin you overcome self you overcome the works of the flesh you overcome all the activities of the world it tells us in revelation chapter 2 
I'm reading from verse 25, Revelation chapter 2. We're reading from verse 25, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. What does that mean? That which you have already. Salvation, hold that fast. Holiness, hold that fast. A pure conscience, hold that fast. The hope of heaven, hold that fast. That which you have, the experience we have in the spirit. And the doctrine that Christ has given to us. Earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Don't let a you know, crusade take your conviction away from you. That we drop every other thing. We drop righteousness. We drop holiness. We drop sanctification. All we're holding on to now. Healing and deliverance. No, no. All that you have. Everything Christ has provided from Calvary. That which he have already. Hold fast till I come. And then in verse 26, it tells us, And he that overcometh. Not that he overcame long, long ago. is no more an overcomer. Not that he's planning in the future to overcome. He that overcometh at every hour. At the present hour. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. He says, it's coming. And the people in the private, in the public, when they're alone, when they're with other people, when they're free, and nobody can even challenge them about what they're doing, the people that know, Nobody might even know what I'm doing, but I'm going to be an overcomer. Because Christ sees you every time and knows you every time. He that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. In verse 27, it then tells us, and he that overcometh. And he that conquer, and he that one that has the power to walk in righteousness and holiness, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. I, as the vessel of a potter, shall they be broken into shivers, even as I received of my father in a first. Uh, that's first John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, reading from verse 4. The overcomer at his second coming. In first John chapter 5, reading from verse 4, it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Whatsoever. Whosoever, anywhere, everywhere, whosoever is born of God. You know, that's how we know those who are born again. That's how we know those who are born into the kingdom of God. When you are born again, a new power from heaven. And a new strength from above comes into your life. And even though you are an habitual sinner before, sinning and sinning and sinning, and you have no power to overcome. Now that you are born again, whosoever, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, who is he? Or she that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Born again, believing that Jesus is the Son of God, and then you overcome. And you're overcoming continually, overcoming every time. And look at verse 18 there. In verse 18, it says that we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. 
that's how to overcome temptation will come you say no that temptation comes again you say no an impression will come as if you should do something that is contrary to the perfect will of god you say no no i will not we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not and he that is begotten of god keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not he will not touch you he will not defile you he will not pull you back to your vomit in jesus name saved born again having the grace of god in you that makes you an overcomer every time if you are not an overcomer if you are sinning if you're doing evil in secret although somebody might call you brother so and so sister so and so that one is just talk of mouth but the people that will make it to heaven at last and will go with christ when he comes they are the people that overcome all the evil things of their past life s is the surety of his second coming h is holiness for his second coming O, the overcomers at his second coming and now w is watchfulness for his second coming many times christ himself he said those who are going to be ready and prepared eligible to go with him at the second coming he said they must watch they must watch watchfulness for his second coming luke chapter 21 i'm reading from verse 34 luke 21 verse 34 it said and take heed to yourselves lest at any time never forget yourself lest at any time there's no period for a christian there's no time for a christian to be careless to be wayward to be sinful to be backsliding no time less at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the cares of this life so that they come upon you unawares unprepared not ready it says you don't know when it will come suddenly it will come very soon it's coming unawares it'll come and it's telling you that you must get ready do not allow any sin any evil any carelessness any time as we're getting ready for his coming but that a fiber tells us for us is near shall it come that day shall come on all them that dwell on the whole face of the earth on the face of the whole earth global everywhere men women boys girls will be doing whatever they like and yet he comes soon he comes unprepared he comes and then he tells us what we're to do so that we'll not be among the people that will be lost when he comes in verse 36 verse 36 then tells us he says watch it therefore and pray always now that word always is for both words watch ye always pray ye always therefore because it will come like a snare upon the people of the world Watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape, and to escape all these things, and to stand that they shall come, as they come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. It tells us in Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26 verse 41 it tells us watch and pray 
He said that over and over. Watch and pray. You're saved. Watch and pray. You are preparing and you want to get ready for the coming of the Lord. Watch and pray. You don't want to be missing on that final day. Watch and pray. You don't want to lose your reward at the time of his coming. Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. Hold on. There's temptation and there are people that with their face, with their eyes wide open, they know there's temptation there, they walk into temptation. There are people that play games with temptation. There are some children that will say, I know daddy doesn't like this, I just want to tease daddy. And that thing is temptation. And that thing is sin. And that thing is evil. I just want to, you know, put uh, uh, daddy on the edge and make him shout. He has not shouted for some time since he came from the crusade, showers of blessing crusade. I'm going to tease him. There are, there are people like that, children. There are women like that that will tease other people with temptation. I want to see how strong he is. I want to see how standing he is. There are men that will tease other people. I want to see how solid the people are and they produce temptation and they themselves enter into temptation. Those are gamblers. They're not getting ready for heaven. They're just looking for how to make other people trip. But the Lord is saying, if you have the mind to get to heaven and the mind to be ready for the coming of the Lord, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I pray you'll be ready. I said, I pray you'll be ready. Uh-uh, the church doesn't want to be ready. Why are you not saying amen? You know what I discovered sometimes? Now, let's pay attention. When I come and I see healing, 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 and then I say in Jesus' name, then you give me a global amen. But you understand, what shall it profit a man? If he shall gain all the healing, all the inheritance in the world, and it's not holy, and it's not only for heaven, what will you give in exchange for your soul? Holiness is more important. Getting ready for heaven is more important. And when I say, I pray, the Lord will get you ready for heaven in Jesus' name. He wants us to be ready, and he wants you to be ready. You'll be ready in Jesus' name. Look at Revelation chapter 16. We're reading from verse 15. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. That means suddenly. That means without announcement. That means when many people are asleep. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. Watchfulness. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. I pray you'll keep watching. When you're all alone by yourself, you know that Satan doesn't want anyone to get ready for the coming of the Lord. You'll be watching, and if he comes, or his messengers come, or the tempters come, or the tempresses come, you will stand. You will hold fast. You will overcome. And nothing will make you miss the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. S is the surety of his coming. H is the holiness for his coming. O, the overcomers at his coming. W is the watchfulness for his coming. And now he established for his second 
coming established for his second coming there are people that crawl out crawl in there are people they show up then they vanish there are people they are there now then later they're no more there they are not established established in the christian faith established in the christian salvation established in uh, their relationship with the lord that no matter where they are no matter where they go and no matter what is happening uh, they are established and they are solid in their following after the lord the lord wants us to be established not in and out not falling and rising not hot and then cold not lukewarm and uh, not really there he wants us to have establishment in the christian faith so that whatever wind may blow that wind will not blow you up that wind will not make you backslide look at first thessalonians chapter 3 we're reading from verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. To the end for the purpose, it may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God. That's a mouthful. Establish you. Number one, you have the experience. You experience holiness. Number two, you endure in holiness number three you are established unblameable in holiness those are the people the lord is coming from they're not people who are not sure holiness can anybody be holy you're so established that you know if nobody else on earth has the experience you have the experience you experience you endure and to establish it says to the end uh, that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God even our father at the coming at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints second Thessalonians chapter 2 Verse 17, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Good word, you established in the good word. You are not in good word and bad word. The truth and falsehood the standard and then error you're not oscillating between good and bad and the work the work of your hand the work of your life you are established in good work you're established in good work every time every good work and every good work that's been established now we come to R. As we talk about R, we're talking about readiness. Readiness. You know, in life, if you're expecting something, you have to be ready for that thing you're waiting for. I will be ready. I said, I will be ready. I'm not hearing you very well. You know, as we're here, that the Lord is coming at the time of Noah. Noah was ready. The wife was ready. And the three sons were ready. And the three wives of three sons were ready. But the others were not ready. And the flood took them all away. At the time of Noah, at the time of Lord, Lord was ready somehow. The wife, it appeared she was ready. But they were lingering. 
there's too much of the world in some people and there was too much of the world in lot's wife and then as they were going the angel said look not behind you and as um, lot's wife was coming from behind she looked back and became a pillar of salt and to tell us that that thing could still happen at the time of the coming of the Lord. The Lord himself said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days before the coming of the Lord. They were eating and drinking, they were buying and selling, they were planting and reaping until the day came, and they were marrying and giving in marriage. And then many of them, they were lost in the judgment of the flood. And Jesus said, so shall it be at the time of the coming of the Lord. And then he said, and as it was also in a time of flood, when judgment came upon Sodom and Gomorrah, they were carrying on business as usual life as usual activities as usual their behavior as usual their drunkenness as usual and their fleshly practices as usual until the judgment came and the fire of god's judgment came upon them and then jesus said remember Lord's wife. Brother, you are saved. Keep on following the Lord. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? Sister, you are born again and you have conviction and you want to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Keep your conviction. Whatever you see of other people, ah, I didn't know that is permitted, ah, keep your conviction. I didn't know that, you know, if you're a Christian, a Christian lady, you can still do that, ah, uh ah, -uh, keep your conviction. Remember, Lord's wife, boys and girls, you're saved, you're born again, and your life must be different, and you're waiting for the coming of the Lord. It's going to come just once for the church. It's not going to. Then he comes and he takes some people away and he looks at them and he says, uh -uh, so and so is not here. So and so is not here. So and so is not here. Let me go back again. One rapture. One rapture all over the world. And the Lord wants you to be ready. Our readiness for his second coming. Readiness for his second coming. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 42. Matthew chapter 24. Reading from verse 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. There may be people who will say, I will do this later, I will pray for forgiveness. How do you know that the Lord will not come before that forgiveness is available? They want to be careless. They want to feed, nurse the flesh. They want to do evil. They want to try sin. Those people are not appreciative of the sacrifice of Christ. Those who are gambling with their lives, I will do this now. I will ask for forgiveness later. It says, watch therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Look at verse 44. In verse 44, it says, Therefore, 
be ye also ready therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not in such an hour such a time at such a moment that ye think not the son of man cometh the son of man that's christ that's the coming lord the son of man cometh at an hour that you thought not look at matthew chapter 25 verse 6 in matthew chapter 25 verse 6 that and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him you know this story the foolish virgins were not ready they had lamps at the beginning the lamp was burning burning bright but it have extra oil i'm saved i'm saved that's all go ahead get sanctified now 20 years in the christian faith you're still battling with anger you're still battling with envy you're still battling with self you're still battling with all those things that will pull you down at the coming of the lord why don't you get the extra oil and make sure that your life is bright and your life is clean and your heart your mind your soul every part of you has experienced the glorious nature of christ at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom coming go ye out to meet him verse 10 verse 10 says and while they the foolish virgins went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready that's the word we have to be ready the lord is coming the lord is coming it's not for every dick and hurry it's for those who are ready and it says and those that were ready went in with him and the marriage to the marriage and the door was shut and the door was shut there's no use crying for salvation at that time there's no use saying i backslid and now i'm coming back the rapture has taken place and the people are not those who are not ready the door was shut look at verse 13 in verse 13 it says watch ye therefore for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh he is coming i said he's coming i pray you'll be ready ready for salvation ready for standing standing firm in the lord ready you are steadfast in the lord immovable and your conviction is standing and you are living by the grace of god i pray that grace will continue to increase in your life in jesus name Amen. revelation chapter 19 we're reading from verse 7 revelation chapter 19 verse 7 it tells us let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife the bride has made herself ready the bride the wife of christ the church militant church triumphant church transformed church the wife cleansed washed made clean by the blood of the lamb the wife has made herself ready look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says 
unto her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. You will be ready. I will be ready as the suddenness of his second coming. The suddenness of his second coming. The Lord is coming. It will be sudden. When many people of the world are not thinking about it, they are thinking about economy, not about the second coming. They are thinking about what shall we eat, what shall we drink, where we thou shall we be clothed. They are not thinking about the second coming. They are thinking about extramoral studies, higher studies, more education, more certificates. They are not thinking about the second coming. They are thinking about traveling. I'm going to travel there, travel there. I'm going to get that done. I'm going to get that done. They're not thinking about the second coming. And suddenly, the Lord will come. And because that was not in their thought, they will be left behind. Suddenness of his second coming. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Reading from verse 1. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Reading from verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh, as a thief in the night. Then in verse 3, it says, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And then in verse 4, he tells us, But she, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should come, overtake you, as I see. Verse 5, Yeah, all the children of light and the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Verse 6, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Verse 7 tells us, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Verse 8, but let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an element, the hope of salvation. Now verse 9 assures us, for God has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation, by our Lord Jesus Christ. He does not want any of us to miss the rapture. He does not want any of us to be lost and to be under the wrath of God. He wants us to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 16 verse 15. He will come suddenly. But he wants us to watch so that none of us will be disappointed on that day. Revelation 16, 15, 
Behold, I come as a thief suddenly unannounced. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. I pray you will not be naked. The righteousness of the Lord will clothe you. The goodness of the Lord will provide the grace of God. And the robe of righteousness will be yours in Jesus' name. You will be ready. I will be ready. Say it aloud, I will be ready. When it comes suddenly, the Lord himself will get you ready. You'll not miss that glorious day which is coming in Jesus' name. Chapter 22, Revelation. Chapter 22, we're reading from verse 12. It says, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man as his work shall be. Verse 13, I am Alpha, I am Alpha, listen to me, not an Alpha. When you say an alpha, it means there are other alphas, and he is like them. He is the alpha and the omega, the, no other alpha. I am alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Then in verse 14, he tells us in verse 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments. Not the people that just come and part of them and part of them. They have the grace. They have the experience of salvation to do his will. And they have the experience of sanctification to do that will from the depth of their heart. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the holy, into the city, the holy city. In verse 15, it tells us, for without, outside, are the dogs, you know the dogs? It's not talking about literal dog. It's talking about the people who act like dogs. The back at the bone, the back at everybody, they snap everybody, and they can do their evil thing together outside. No shame. Outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the mongers and the murderers and the idolaters and whosoever, whosoever whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. There are people that love a lie. They don't love the Lord. You cannot love the Lord and love a lie at the same time. God hates lying. If you are a child of God, if you are born again, you will hate lying as God hates lying. But if you love lying, and when there's nothing to lie about, you manufacture a lie. It says all those people are outside. But now the grace of God is presenting to us salvation and cleansing and the water of life. He wants everybody to make it when he comes. And I pray you will make it when he comes in Jesus' name. <laughs> Look at me shouting, even with the microphone. And you people there with that microphone, you cannot shout, you cannot shout back. I said, the Lord will get you ready. You will not be missing on that day in Jesus' name. 
Look at verse, uh, look at it now in verse 16. It says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bride and the morning star. Verse 17, it says, and the spirit and the bride say, come. You can still come. There's still chance. It's still the day of salvation. And the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the bride, and the church, the body of Christ, they say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, is still available salvation. Is still available holiness. Is still available the overcoming life. It's still available the spirit and the power and the vigilance to watch. The watchfulness is still available establishment in holiness before the coming of the Lord. It is still available righteousness and readiness. It's still available sanctification. So you can be ready for the, for the sudden coming of the Lord. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is the thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. It's available. Grace is available. Let me hear a good amen. Godliness is available. Readiness available. Everything you need that you'll be ready for that final day, that coming day, it may be today, it may be tomorrow. We don't know when it will come. Whenever he will come, all it will take to get you ready, may the Lord grant it unto you in Jesus' name. Now we're going to rise up and we're going to pray and we're going to tell the Lord, Oh Lord, here I am. Get me ready. I know the Lord is coming. There's no doubt. There's no shadow of doubt in my heart. The Lord is coming. And I want to be ready when he comes. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Did I cast?